Hi, welcome to the Sigma Pad. This is a spontaneous episode where I wanted to show you an upgrade I'm doing to my lab. I'm going through a process of kind of modernizing some of my older equipment. For example, you saw the power sensor that I repaired and replaced last time. And uh, I happened to come across uh, this National Instrument PXI module and I got this for a really, really good price uh, from somebody as a used item. And uh, the reason I bought this is because this was a, a 14 slot chassis, so you can have many, many PXI modules. The, uh, the chassis that I used to have, which used to actually sit right here before, if you remember, you know, my, my uh, the key side scope was sitting on top of it, my power supply was right next to it, and I used it for IQ generation and so on. And uh, it only had uh, nine slots in it, so that uh, and it was basically becoming full because I had bought a couple of other PXI modules for some experiments I wanted to do. I found some good deals on eBay, and uh, I thought, hey, it's time to upgrade the module and get a bigger one and since I'm going to transfer all the PXI module into this unit I thought I'll just show them to you and talk a little bit about each of them and what they do and why I bought them and so on and in this way we can also take a look at inside this uh, probably not many of you have used the PXI module and they are essentially meant for automation uh, quite many times and they're really really high quality especially the NI modules, Agile modules, they make really really good uh, products but they're very very expensive so that's why I never buy them new because it's impossible to really afford them on a kind of hobby um, budget but anyhow so we can take a qu quick look at it and I, you know, let me know what you think about this spontaneous type of videos uh, that uh, I, I wasn't really planning to do and I just kind of decided to record it but anyhow let me know, we go step by step and see what happens so the very first module that has to go is of course an embedded controller. An embedded controller is, is nothing more than a PC really, uh, but um, much more expensive than a normal PC would be simply because of its form factor and because of the way it's designed to fit into the PXI chassis. So I bought this one uh, as a kind of an as-is unit a while back. It didn't have a hard drive, it didn't have any uh, memory in it. And uh, I happened to work luckily once I installed a hard drive in it and installed Windows on it. But you can get an idea of, of its instruction. This is a Core 2 Duo processor on it. And I look, it's essentially passively cooled. Although the, the chassis itself has quite a bit of fan in it. But really it doesn't have its own fan. And I put a hard drive in there and you can see the, the construction of the board. There's two, two boards on top and bottom. And the power is distributed from the top board to the bottom. This is a PXI chassis connector. Look at how many pins it has. This is an older one. There's a, PCA, a PXI Express version, I believe, which is a different type of connector, um, which is uh, smaller, but it was still significantly faster. This heatsink is most likely on the north or south bridge on the motherboard. And you can see this ribbon flex cable that connects the bottom piece where the processor sits uh, and uh, the memory sits to the top board where all the IO interfaces are on this side as well as the, uh, the, uh, mod uh, the hard drive. So essentially this is a motherboard broken into two pieces, nothing more, and the connection between them is done this way. These things can be very, very expensive. I don't remember how much I paid for this, but not more than a couple of hundred dollars. Uh, if you were to buy them new, wow, very, very expensive. And you can see in the front a couple of interesting things. There's a trigger uh, function there, serial port. This is a printer port, wow. And this is actually, you can tell how old this is by the fact that he has this. Here's a mini GPIB. The cable to go from this to a regular GPIB, my god, you don't even ask how much that thing costs. He has four USB ports, the Ethernet port. This USB is uh, occupied with uh, a, my, uh, uh, why, actually this is my wireless mouse and keyboard. This is a wireless Wi-Fi card. It's a PCI Express card right now. It's occupied with some memory. And a DVI port to connect to the motherboard. This is an NI a national instrument one and the part number is uh, PXI8106. So this is the very first thing we're going to uh, install into the chassis and uh, there is a special place for it. It has to sit on the first module on the chassis on the left there, over there. And if I go ahead and give you just a quick look inside the chassis, you can see how that connector uh, fits in. Look at all of those connectors at the back. Look at all those pins. Actually, when I got this, I was giving it a, a close examination and one of these pins was bent back and down toward the, um, um, the motherboard and that's because somebody must have pushed something in there and bent one of these pins. I carefully straightened it out so that you can, I, I forgot where it was now because it's so straight, they all look the same. They're very, very sensitive so you should be very careful with them. And this red one here, uh, red uh, location there is of course for the embedded controller to go in. So let's go ahead and put that in and move on to the next one. This is the next unit. You've seen me uh, use this one in the videos. It's probably my favorite PXI module. Uh, this is a 1.25 uh, giga sample per second, 15-bit 
dual channel arbitrary waveform generator and it's made by Agilent. The, the model N6030A is uh, not obsolete but it's discontinued, replaced with an, uh, something else which I can't remember on top of my head but it's essentially the same function. But look at how, my god, how complex and how how compact this thing is because this is a very very uh, advanced module and its performance is extraordinary. It's one of the best uh, dual DAX with 15-bit resolution at these samplers that you can buy on the market even today is one of the best that there is and this is used to create complex modulation essentially mostly for wireless testing which is what I've been doing with it in my different videos and so on and you saw that it can generate a 256 qualm that has an EVM of 0.25 percent which is extraordinary and uh, even less than that probably if I were to calibrate it correctly but you can see the construction again multiple boards uh, connected together via these massive parallel connectors uh, several probably a board dedicated mostly for power supply there's a board there with a processor in the center uh, which handles most likely all the data going to the DAX and there's even a fan on that processor there in the middle and the DAC module itself if you look these are the outputs DAC module itself is fully enclosed because uh, in order to protect it from any kind of noise and so on and there's another um, enclosed case here which is all the uh, actually, sorry, I said that backwards to the middle. This one, this is the DAC in the middle. So this was the, the DAC module in here. This is the other outputs like the synchronization, the reference, and so on, and all go in there. So the PLL uh, construction is in here, and the the DAC itself is over there. And it has to has has to have an essentially a perfect DAC and a perfect PLL to have this type of performance. Quite an amazing. Uh, instrument at the back you can see uh, the big IC over here a couple of other components there and there's a whole bunch of debugging LEDs here on the side uh, which you would be able to see for example if you were you know working at the agent or so on trying to debug one of these but anyhow pretty pretty amazing amazing instrument uh, and I'm sure I'm going to use it a lot more now where I'm going to put this is I'm going to put it at the very very end and that's because the actual PXI connections end here in slot number 14 and there's no more connection to the motherboard they're actually blank they don't have the connectors installed but if you look at the way this is the connector is all the way here so if I were to install it right here it will occupy all of these uh, without actually having to use all of the uh, if I were to install it in this point here it will occupy multiple slots which have connectors which can be used for other uh, PXI modules, but at the, installing it at the end allows me to save uh, unused slots like that. So let's go ahead and put it in. All right, two down, a whole bunch more to go. And here's something from a different manufacturer. This is from Pickering, and Pickering is uh, probably the other big name in this type of uh, PXI modules. And Pickering is a far, far uh, cheaper option uh, for these type of things. And uh, if you buy Azure and NI they're going to be much more expensive and this particular one is nothing more than two microwave switches I just happened to pick this up uh, it was really inexpensive and and uh, you can see the construction is so simple and this is interesting because I think this board is probably used for a couple of different uh, type of um, modules and this one uh, you know happens to be the microwave one so all it does is that there's two microwave switches with a common at the input and then you can switch either to the top and or to the bottom so it's just mechanical relays basically nothing more and look at the top of this little IC you can see it says it's RF tested it was tested by Colin, Maria and Sharon well if you guys are watching uh, send me a message you can see the connector is much smaller because it doesn't need such a wide bus uh, the data rate to this is well, essentially very 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 little and it's pretty, pretty simple nothing else to it there's not, absolutely nothing at the back of there's one more person. Wendy has also looked at this <laughs> uh, board as well. And that's it. This is uh, useful for switching microwave uh, between two things. Let's say you have a device under test that you want to route a microwave signal to it, or then you want to look at the microwave signal on an instrument. So instead of having to connect and disconnect, you can use this. Most of these, like I said, are meant for automation, switching things in and out. So let's go ahead and install this thing too. All right, here we go. I gave it a one gap between the arbitrary waveform generator and the switch, and simply because this thing gets really, really hot, just give it some more room to breathe. So this is now an unused slot. If I ever run out of things, then I can populate it again. But for now, there's nothing in there. And here we have one more module, one more uh, PXI module from Pickering again. This is the Pickering 41-320-001. Uh, uh, which is a, a dual channel digitizer so you can see that it has two differential inputs this one and this one and it's a dual channel digitizer and these are these are uh, uh, SM 
B connectors, I believe, I, I forget. Uh, but uh, the, 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 the nice thing about this one is that it has, uh, like I said, two, two channels uh, running at 14 bits. It can have 50 or 70 mega samples per second. It has a whole bunch of different adjustable filters, uh, AC or DC coupling with pedestal on DC. It has 512 uh, bytes of uh, memory on each channel. It can simultaneously sample both channels. So it's basically a two-channel digitizer. It's just that because it's at 14 bits, it has a very high dynamic range. Not nearly as high as uh, another thing I'm going to show you, but the sample space is, the sampling rate is much higher uh, at up to about 70 megahertz. And you can also have your own external trigger and clock and having an external clock to have a coherent measurement and so on. Again, you can see the connector is back to the normal size because it has a lot more data it has to send through. You can see a whole bunch of filtering here. Right here, you can see a whole quite a bit of filtering done here to clean up the power supplies. You can see the differential, the clock input coming right over here to overwrite the crystals that are uh, on there already and the inputs go into this, uh, this board right here, go through all these different switches and filters and so on to give you all the different combinations. Here are the two ADCs and the ADCs are analog devices ADCs, AD9244 devices. There you go. Here's the memory that's local to them and here's the some lattice uh, FPGA or CPLD to control and program and read data from the FP from the um, ADCs onto the memory and so on. And this guy communicates with the bus uh, that sits on the PCI bus on the whole chassis. There it is. You can see pretty nice, straightforward. A couple of other components at the back. And uh, I've tested this. It's nice. It has a reasonably good dynamic range. Pretty happy with it. Again, picked this up. Fairly inexpensive. So no complaints there. Here we go, I installed that right next to the other Pickering one. I installed them next to each other so they don't get bullied by the more expensive Agilent and NI components. Well, maybe I should stop anthropomorphizing my test equipment. Well, I can't help it. And here's an actual NI module. This is a dual 8x1 50 ohm 500 megahertz multiplexer. And what that means is that it's essentially a, a series of multiplexers that are rated up to 500 megahertz and they're 50 ohm um, terminated. So you can see that this connection 0, for example, can be configured to be connected to any of the um, 7 that are up there. And this one can be configured to be connected to any of the ones at the bottom. So this is a basically a matrix switch in a way where you can connect a common port and have two signals coming here and then configure them to any of the other outputs. Useful for again switching uh, IF signals for example to multiple transmitters and so on and you can quickly go back and forth uh, between them. You can clearly see the construction uh, so much more uh, advanced I should say in some way they use all BGA components using all ultra cyclone FPGA which I'm sure they're configuring to do all their uh, switching and so on and communicating and there is a TI part here I haven't looked at it very closely here's the main switch switching board you can see it's fully isolated fully separated from everything else it's on a different module by itself connected with a ribbon cable to this board over here this is probably a more generic board that they can use to connect to the PCI bus at the back of the motherboard it doesn't have a full connector it's missing this because again it doesn't need uh, all the communication speed but it's a very nice module I haven't uh, used this in any of my experiments for you guys yet but uh, I really like this one as well because of its uh, the quality repeated uh, the rep repeatability of uh, these connectors pretty pretty awesome so let's go put it in so this is a, another NI module that I have it's just pretty interesting this is an 8 channel digitizer but it's a hundred and uh, 2.4 kilo sample per second 24 bit on eight channels simultaneously which is really quite extraordinary you can select the input range to be plus or minus 10 uh, to plus or minus 31 volt and so on but at 24 bits it has a dynamic range in excess of a 110 dB this is ideal for acoustic and audio analysis applications and I have some ideas and some plans and some cool experiments that I want to do with these and I just happened to find this on eBay and it was for such a great price I couldn't help it but I bought two of them and uh, anyhow it was still a fraction of what they normally cost so I was pretty happy I haven't actually uh, used them yet so I'm gonna install them this is actually what uh, sparked this whole upgrade because I didn't have any more room to put these so I'm gonna go ahead and install these again I can take a look all these sensitive audio section um, I should say the, the conversion the digital conversion section is is embedded and protected here a whole bunch of analog circuitry and uh, some op amps to the back uh, again, a, a few more ICs for communicating with the bus. Here's, uh, here's another uh, Xilinx FPGA over there. Some power management and so on and a few other components. But anyhow, I don't want to get into too much detail, but just uh, just you know, look forward to 
playing with this and using it for some very, very interesting applications. So there's two of these, I can put them side by side, and then that will give us 16 channels of, uh, you know, 24 bit resolution, crazy. Here we go, everything put together and I've closed up all the empty slots. I have about six empty uh, locations left for, you know, for more fun future PXI components and I turned everything on and installed the drivers again. Everything looks good. Just to show you how it's working, I've connected the arbitrary waveform generator to my oscilloscope here and just to show you what I'm generating, I'm generating here on the embedded controller uh, software. You can see I'm uh, creating two tones, one tone at 245 megahertz and another tone at 255 megahertz remember the sampling rate is 1.25 gigahertz so this is about one fifth of the sampling so there's five um, samples per period of each of those waveforms and i'm capturing that with the oscilloscope and if you look over here and i'm capturing on the msos oscilloscope here uh, which i've reviewed on my channel and if you haven't seen that review i highly recommend it because it's got quite a lot of cool experiments in it which I'm sure you would like. And uh, here at the top, you can see the two waveforms on top of each other. And this is the interesting plot that I wanted to show you. Here's the two tones, one at 245 and the other one at 255. The scale here is 15 dB per division. So these tones that you see at the very bottom are about 60 dB below the fundamental. So the third order intermodulation products of this DAC combined with the scope is 60 dB, which is really quite extraordinary when you think about it. It's an extremely clean DAC, even though even it's a one-fifth of its uh, sampling rate that it's generating. And it's a very, very high dynamic range, as you can see, uh, to the noise floor, better than 75 dB. So this is an excellent uh, uh, instrument for generating signals for wireless application, as I've demonstrated. So I have no idea how this video will be received. I don't know if you guys enjoy this type of thing or not. Either way, please let me know so I know if it's worthwhile making more of these uh, spontaneous videos in the future. And if you like it, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And then, until next time.